Hello there. Welcome to Tuck and Cash. I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video wait, wait this is not the right script. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Wing In It. So today I have part one of a new three part series I'll be doing on this channel where I look at different engines that you can build in each of the habitats in Wingspan. So today we'll be starting with the first habitat which is forest. So you'll see in my hand I've got the wood duck which in my opinion is kind of the cornerstone to any strong forest engine. Um, it's just such a powerful card to get down especially early in the game. Um, you know, Whenever you can get two different kinds of resources in the same action you're already off to a strong start and being efficient with your turns um, but what makes the wood duck so special is the fact that it's the only bird that gives you cards in the forest so that is so strong because you're getting cards and at the same time you're getting food in order to play those cards um, so it just really accelerates your game and instead of having to spend one turn gaining cards and then another turn gaining food you can just do both of those things in one turn so um, yeah, you're, you're saving yourself turns early on. Another important part of a strong forest engine is being able to get eggs from somewhere. So traditionally this would be from something like a chipping sparrow or uh, a California quail or kind of the best bird for this would be a polluted woodpecker. So that gets you two eggs per turn whereas the others that I mentioned just get you one. Um, you can also work with some of those pink egg laying birds so the cowbirds in particular are really strong. Um, Barrow's golden eyes really nice with the wood duck because it will directly lay eggs into the wood duck's uh, cavity nest spaces. So you don't have to worry about what other birds you have here. Um, what I'm working with here is a slightly less conventional forest engine because I'll be going with the bush tip um, and that will get me eggs from the forest. Now this is only going to work in this engine because I have the catbird. So the way the wood duck works is you get to draw two cards each turn uh, but you have to discard one. So if I had just wood duck and bush tip, I'd be gaining two cards. One of those would be tucked and the other would be discarded, so I wouldn't be left with anything left to play. Uh, but with the catbird, I can, I can copy the wood duck's power, which just gives me that extra card. Um, and in my opinion, I think actually having that wood duck and catbird early on is, is so strong because it allows you to see four cards per turn. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're if you're tucking some of them or discarding some of them. I think just the ability to see that many cards in a turn, you know, you can really filter through the deck quickly. Um, and you know, when you're seeing that many cards, you're going to draw a lot of bad birds that you wouldn't normally want to play. Um, but if you're drawing so many, you can you can keep cycling through until eventually you get some good ones. Um, so I already have a couple in my hand that I will be looking to play. So you'll see I've got the nut hatch that's a really strong card to get in a forest engine because it just extends that forest out allows you to get more food um, but it's also guaranteed points and uh, you know because I'll be running this engine I know that um, most of my turns will be in the forest so I can really make the use of that caching power on the nut hatch uh, each of those cached food is going to be worth a point at the end of the game so absolutely worth going for uh, you see the golden eyes just come up in the tray so um, that's one of the birds along with the cowbird I've already played that I mentioned as, as being really strong birds so yeah absolutely you know I'm as soon as that appears uh, I'm gonna jump all over it now you'll start to see as well um, the kind of the key really to a successful forest engine um, is not necessarily in the points you get from activating it you know you'll see I'm I'm only really getting two points every time I activate it one for the tuck on the bush tit and one for the egg uh, once I play the nut hatch, uh, which I think is this turn, uh, that will go up to three, but it's still not enough. You know, you can't rely on three points a turn uh, for the whole game. Really, the strength of a forest engine is getting lots of bird points and getting lots of bonus cards. So you'll see I've drawn the Rosate Spoonbill, um, and that's kind of a, a perfect example of the kind of bird that you'll be looking to play with a forest engine. Um, and, and equally the Bells Viria is another one in my hand that uh, really I'm, I'm thinking of playing at some point um, and yeah really you know when you're getting three food a turn three food is enough to play any bird in the game so really you're just relying on using that wood duck 
uh, and in this case using the Catbird as well, to just cycle through the deck um, and, and get some good cards. And you know, you see on that turn, I didn't get some great cards, but um, it's not a huge problem for me because I know I'm going to be getting a lot of food um, and getting a lot of more cards. So some of those cards are going to get tucked under the bush tip, but equally some of them can be discarded in future turns. Um, and yeah, that's not a huge problem for me. So um, you'll see I've got the Gold Knight down. Uh, you know, these pink powers, you want to get them down really as soon as you can afford to do so, just because the sooner they're down, the more chances you are giving yourself of uh, of being able to activate them and get their eggs. So um, yeah, I did have to lay eggs on that turn. That was just for the end of round. So I did manage to tie it though. So that's always nice. Um, gets more gets more points that way. Um, another bird you'll see come up in the tray that is a really strong bird that you should always look to go for when you're running forest engine uh, is the great egret. The, you know these double birds. You're going to have so much food left over. Uh, generally at the end of the game so really you know being able to play something like the egret with the spoon bill ordinarily getting that six food um, to spend on one turn it can be really difficult but you know with this forest engine I'm getting three food a turn um, I can reset the bird feeder almost every turn it's gonna give me pretty much exactly the food I need so um, yeah really at this point like I said just looking to cycle through this deck, um, get as many of these big point birds um, or bonus point birds as possible. Uh, so you'll see in this turn I'm looking at the Mockingbird. Yeah, uh, you know, if I can get that down in my forest that's going to be another point. Um, but there does become a point in this game where you kind of have to stick with what you've got in your engine. Um, and yeah, I, I decided there wasn't really going to be enough points uh, from the Mockingbird there weren't really enough turns in the end game and actually you'll see it going from the deck I got some really strong birds so Woodstalk and Whooping Crane are two great examples of you know these bonus card birds in the wetland I did have a bit of a difficult decision um, you know that that pipit is nice for the bonus card but I just decided uh, you know, I had to get rid of that um, and another thing to bear in mind is when I do gain food one of these cards is gonna have to get tucked because uh, I don't really want to be skipping that bush tip power for two points um, all of those wetland birds are really strong, so uh, for me it's toss up between the Vireo and the Warbler. Uh, I was just looking at my bonus card because I did have uh, Anatomist bonus card, which means I need as many birds with body parts in their names as possible. So I've already got two down in the Nuthatch and the Goldeneye, and then I've got the Spoonbill in my hand and the Blue Winged Warbler would be the fourth. Um, so originally I was going to discard the Warbler, but uh, in the end, I think I do go with the Bell Zerio just because, uh, you know, I really want to be to be maxing out my my bonus card um, and getting as, as many points as possible. So yeah, in the end, that does go, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But then again, you know, looking at how many turns I've got left, um, how many other birds I've got that I want to be playing, including something like the Painted Bunting, uh, which I've just picked up in that turn. Uh, you know, at some point, you've got to decide to stick with what you got rather than uh, you know keep going from the deck uh, so yeah at this point I'm kind of looking at the uh, all these bonus card birds in my hand uh, wondering how many of them I can actually get down um, but yeah really for me at this point it's just kind of keep uh, keep getting the food I need um, you know I did have the right food for the for the woodstock so I think in a situation like this it is you know beneficial to play at least one of the bonus card birds early because you at least get to look at that bonus card that you draw from it um, and that can in some situations dictate what you play for the remainder of your turns. Uh, fortunately I do get the food web expert there which would have been perfect with the Viria that I just had tucked on the previous turn but um, I took the Eulogist instead which I think I can still make it work. Um, Eulogist ordinarily is uh, is such a strong bonus card you know it's pretty much a guaranteed six points when you're laying so many eggs um, but it is a slightly weaker situation with this forest engine where uh, I'm only really getting eggs on, on a few birds from my pink powers. Uh, you'll see I've drawn another double bird, so I've got the great blue heron here. Um, and, and kind of some really difficult decisions here because basically every bird in, in my hand is so strong. But just when I look at the number of turns I've got left uh, and, and think about how many food I'm going to need to play all of these. Uh, particularly in that wetlands, if I am uh, going to use both of those double birds... You know, the blue heron and the egret that only leaves space for one more uh, bird at the end 
so that would be either the whipping crane or the spoonbill um, so I can't keep both which means one of them is going to have to go um, and yeah really looking at the other birds in my hand just trying to work out okay probably want to get that bunting down and and hope for a good bonus card but yeah really you know you'll see the key with building a good forest engine like this is really maximizing those turns at the end of the game spending as many of those as possible laying all these big point birds uh, you know you can see in my hand I've got so many you know I'm kind of sport for choice really in terms of all these big point birds I've got um, so yeah I just want to try and get as many down as I said and, and hope to really get as many bonus cards as possible and just maximize the points I can get from that as well but yeah I mean at this point it doesn't really matter too much um, what birds I am getting from the wood duck because uh, most of them are, are going to get tucked behind the bush tit anyway um, at that point I'm, I'm really just trying to get as much food as I can um, in order to afford to get down all of these bonus card birds so yeah at this point you kind of just pray and and hope that you draw some good bonus cards um, that you know either fit the birds that you've already played um, or that fit the ones that are in your hand so yeah played the painted bunting here and got quite a nice draw on the bonus card so um, wildlife gardener works because I know I'm already planning on playing that warbler uh, you know I already needed to for the other bonus card in my hand um, so I can I can double up on that and, and hit two bonus cards with one um, and yeah with the others I'm just kind of checking my food making sure I've got enough to get all those other double birds down um, bearing in mind that I may well have to lay eggs again at some point just um, to meet the Ulogis bonus card so yeah I need to make sure that I, I do have a spare turn at the end to allow me to do that so at this point I'm really just checking my food um, checking my birds in my hand and just you know thinking okay what food do I need um, you'll notice in particular these birds I need a lot of fish uh, fortunately I do only have two in my supply um, and there's none in the feeder I will get a reroll but uh, I'm kind of expecting that I'm gonna have to do some uh, two for ones here so for me it's just really kind of calculating checking making sure I've got enough food um, so I do decide okay I need more food uh, I'll go back to the bird feeder hope on a reroll unfortunately no fish but do get another chance to reroll here and again no fish um, so you know that happens sometimes you're kind of at the mercy of the bird feeder and see what you get but uh, at this point I am able to double that bush tip with the cat bird um, you know, as I said I kind of I don't really need any more bird cards um, I've kind of got everything I need you know with only two turns left and, and five birds in the hand even with some of those being doubled up um, you know there's 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 only so many birds you can actually play in that turn so um, yeah getting some nice pink power activations which certainly helps um, and it's going to help towards that eulogist which I'm just double checking there to make sure that um, I've got enough turns and, and we'll be able to lay enough eggs um, so yep this is the turn that I go for the the double birds and you'll see this is such a strong move uh, you know I'm getting 18 bird points um, plus the the bonus card from the spoon bill uh, and that's just a huge point bomb to lay down at the end of the game um, you know it's absolutely massive and obviously these some of these birds count towards you know, I'm just checking there the anatomist bonus card the spoon bill helps um, so that's going to get even more points from that as well um, so yeah at this point you kind of just hope you get a nice bonus card and yeah photographer absolutely perfect uh, I've already played enough birds to, to get the six points from that um, so happy days and yeah really I can just look to spend this last turn laying eggs um, unfortunately it is only four points which you know ordinarily isn't great obviously I can discard that food for the for the fourth egg uh, but it will help me meet the eulogist bonus card for another three so I can think about this as a seven point activation and uh, yeah if you can get seven points from your last turn I don't think you've done too much wrong there um, so yeah that's the end of the game and as the scores count through you'll you'll really see the sort of breakdown of points um, that you can normally get from this this forest engine so yeah anytime you're scoring 60 points in bird points alone uh, you're doing well but to be able to add another 20 or so from bonus points yeah that's already a respectable score in its own right and we're not even you know getting into eggs and and cached food and all of that so yeah a lot of points um, some tuck cards as well from the bush tit uh, and 130 is is always a good score so yeah I hope this has really you know, shown off the power that you can get from a forest engine um, obviously the wood duck kind of being the the MVP here getting all of those cards and just being able to save turns not having to go into the wetlands uh, I don't think I, I did the wetlands once in this turn just because the wood duck 
you know, allowed me that freedom to, to stick to the forest. Um, and then, as I said, slightly unconventional with the cat bird in the bush tip, but you know, I managed to make it work and, and get lots of tuck cards and obviously the eggs from the bush tip. And then, yeah, nut hatches are, are always a nice addition to any forest engine. So, yeah, hopefully you found this useful and next time you see the wood duck early in your game, you can think about building up an engine similar to this. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and as I said, this will be a three part series where in the next video, uh, I'll take a look at how to set up a really strong grasslands engine. So stay tuned for that.